Hi Hill Knight, welcome to my channel. This is my double movie review of Bloodfest and Hellfest. I give Bloodfest a grade of C plus. I give Hellfest a grade of B plus. Both movies were released in 2018. Both movies feature a cameo by a Hollywood D-list actor. Both movies are about a group of young people that go to a horror festival only to discover that the terror is real. The chief difference between the movies are Hellfest is a straight up slasher film and it's about one homicide maniac hunting down a small group of protagonists whereas Bloodfest is a horror comedy and it's about 90% of everyone that works at the horror festival trying to kill 100% of all the guests that have visited the park on that night. So in this double movie review, first I'll talk about Bloodfest because that was released first. Then I'll talk about Hellfest. I'll mention the things that I like most about each movie. I'll mention the things that upset me the most about each movie. And then in my verdict, I'll explain why even though one movie is graded higher than the other, I enjoyed a particular movie more than the other. And with that in mind, sit back, relax, as I explain which fest was best. Blood Fest is about a young man named Dax. When he was very young, he was watching scary movies around Halloween with his mother. His mother went uh, to a different part of the house. Someone broke into the house and killed the mother. Fortunately, that uh, homicide maniac was uh, defeated, but uh, his motivations were tied to scary movies. So, even though uh, there was that tie in, the young man Dash grew up to love horror movies. It's his favorite genre. He knows practically everything there is to know about horror films, which is great because when he goes to the Bloodfest event, it turns out that uh, it's run by this uh, Hollywood director played by Owen Egerton, and he wants to kill everyone at the festival. His plan is to make the ultimate horror film because he believes that uh, horror has lost its bite, lost its edge. Now, he doesn't plan on getting away with this mass murder, but he just wants to make the ultimate horror film go down in history as the greatest uh, director of horror of all time. And thanks to Dax's knowledge of horror that will hopefully allow him and his friends to survive the night. Now what I loved most about uh, this movie was Owen Everton. Uh, he is the writer and director of the movie and he plays uh, the director of the part and he truly shows his passion for the medium. His character is both comedic and menacing. Now, I mentioned that Bloodfest was a horror comedy. It's not a horror parody like Vampire Suck and uh, the Scary Movie franchise. It's a horror comedy like uh, A Cabin in the Woods or uh, the second Evil Dead movie. So, uh, this character is menacing and conniving, but he also is taking pure joy out of all of the chaos that he's creating. Not only is his character wonderful, but the behind-the-scenes assistants that are uh, manipulating events in the park are interesting. There's this mechanic that's just uh, in and out of the movie, but he's a lot more enjoyable than all the main protagonists, which is my uh, one of my two complaints about the movie, that the, well, uh, the main protagonists are practically those uh, tropes from uh, horror movies that uh, a cabin would mention. You know, the athlete, the fool, the whore, you know, the virgin, and, and you know, what have you. And I was just so disinterested in those characters. I was way more interested in following uh, the director and the behind the scenes scene and all the uh, people that were manipulating the monsters and things like that. I was a lot more interested in that than those uh, horror tropes. Like those horror tropes were so boring. And the thing that I disliked the most about this movie is that the Bloodfest is supposed to be this giant uh, theme park. It's probably like half the size of the Magic Kingdom. And yet, we follow just the main protagonists. I mean, there's a big old opening ceremony and there's initial chaos of, you know, dozens of people being chopped up and sliced and stabbed and things like that. But after that, we just follow these generic 
the protagonist. And I'm like, well, what about all the other chaos that's going on? And there's like a, there's a zombie realm and a vampire realm and a killer clown realm. And, but it's the, the main protagonist to go to those realms. Where are those hundreds of other people that went to the park? In fact, there's a point in the movie where they say like, well, how many people are left? There's about a little more than 200 people left. And we don't see them anymore. Think of the movie Armageddon. Whatever you think about Michael Bay, when he made that movie, he knew that, okay, if the earth is in danger, you got to show parts of the earth being in danger. He probably would have loved to stay with the uh, roughnecks and, and uh, up in space and things like that. But every once in a while, you got to show the earth. You got to show cities being destroyed. You got to show people running to shelters. You got to see people pray. You got to show uh, news clips. You know, you got to go back to earth and say, yeah, the earth is in danger. Here's what's happening on earth. So with Bloodfest, you don't get that. There's supposedly hundreds and hundreds of people being viciously mutilated and we don't get to see any of that. You know, it's like going to, like throwing a big party at Baskin Robbins and then only being served uh, strawberry and vanilla. It doesn't matter how great that strawberry and vanilla are, what's the point of going to Baskin Robbins 31 flavors if you're just going to serve me two of the most generic flavors of ice cream imaginable, okay? So yeah, that's where the movie dropped the ball. It's a very excellent movie. Uh, I, it, it's, it's intense, it's uh, charming, it's funny, but I was just not interested in the main character. I was much more interested in the uh, antagonist. And please, show me the chaos. You know that old saying, show don't, show, just, uh, show don't tell? Show me the craziness and the zaniness and the chaos and, and the mutilation. I want to see all that. It's the horror festival. It's this giant facility. Show me the, 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 the show me the blood. Show me it to me. Come on. Hellfest is a more traditional horror movie. It's about a young lady named Natalie. She's uh, visiting some old college friends that she's uh, trying to just reconnect with and have a nice fun weekend. Those friends surprise her with tickets to Hellfest. And all the friends are excited to go, but she's a little reluctant. But something that incentives her to go is that her ex-boyfriend will also be attending Hellfest. So maybe she'll uh, reconnect with him and restart that love connection between the two and have some hijinks. When they're there, they see uh, a person being killed and what seems like, uh, you know, uh, play acting that uh, it's just a performance, it turns out it's real. And because they witnessed that, the homicidal maniac uh, turns his attention to Natalie and his group. And at first, I love this premise. I love the idea that uh, there's just some maniac just randomly coming and uh, randomly targeting people because that means you don't know what's going to happen next. Especially the order of the people, uh, the main protagonists that die. Now, I mentioned in Bloodfest that I wasn't really invested in the uh, protagonist characters and in Hellfest, it's not so much that I'm invested with them, but because the order of the death is so drastically different from what usually happens in these slasher movies, I was really interested in what was going to happen to them and how they're going to get killed and who was going to survive. But what I loved about the movie quickly became what I disliked about the movie. Because by the end of the film, we learn nothing significant about the killer. In fact, you got to watch, watch the title, the, the end credits, to learn that the killer is called The Other. At no time do you see his face. At no time does he speak a real sentence. I mean, he just walks around uh, whistling, um, uh, Pop Goes the Weasel. He seems to have an obsession with uh, women with brown hair. And maybe he targets young women that claim they don't be afraid. Like, oh, that doesn't scare me. That doesn't scare me. Oh, that's ha ha. And he targets them. I, I don't know. He literally goes to the festival puts on a mask that's the similar mask to the other people that work there and just randomly targets somebody. And when he wants to kill that person, he starts targeting the, the, the Natalie and the friends. So all that backstory I mentioned about Natalie is completely pointless. You can take practically the entire first act. You can pretty much start the movie where the protagonists arrive at the festival and it will not affect the story at all. Now, by that I mean, uh, think about uh, suspense and horror. You know, you know, uh, 
when we rewatch it, we like to skip to the good parts, but there's usually information in that first act that is vital to the characters or to the uh, antagonists. You know, like uh, the opening of Halloween, where, uh, you know, we see the point of view of Michael Myers uh, killing his sister and the boyfriend, or, uh, um, you know, uh, Gremlins, where we learn about the Mogli and that it's Christmas time and those, uh, you know, essential rules about how you're supposed to take care of those creatures. Or even like uh, the Twilight Zone, you know, the, they usually had that cool monologue by Roger Sterling setting up the adventure and with some, you know, interesting uh, twists about what's going to happen. Even something like um, Beetlejuice, you know, we, we open up, we learn, we meet the Maitlands and we learn uh, that they were trying to start a homeland, but they tragically died. So that's one reason why they're so uh, obsessed with getting the deeps out of their home because they want what's left of their humanity, their home, to remain preserved. That's all important. You know, all that information is vital. So, you know, after you see the movie, you can skip it, but, you know, it's all essentially vital. But here in Hellfest, none of that backstory, none of that information in the first act is important. And by the end, you're left with even more questions and answers. It's like, Okay, uh, uh, if he just randomly shows up, is he going to just go to various festivals? Because by the end, you see that he puts away his mask, but we see he has other masks uh, in collecting in his closet. So it's like, does he work at these festivals? And then on his day off, he chooses a mask and, and starts, you know, killing people. Is he trying to reach a certain quota of killing people? Uh, why does he start killing people? Did he lose somebody at a festival? Was he uh, traumatized by someone that claimed uh, that, you know, they weren't scared? I, I keep referring to him, him. You don't even ensure that he's a he until the very end because there are plenty of uh, slasher movies in which the antagonist revealed to be actually a woman. So, you know, you don't look. And then at the very end, when you see uh, a glimpse of his home life, you think, okay, what if he actually was killed or captured? Because he's not really presented like those invincible slashers like uh, Jason Voorhees or Michael Myers. You know, he, he, he's presented as pretty much human. So what if he was actually captured or killed? What would have happened to his home life? And what does he do when he's not? Killing people at these horror festivals. You know, most slashers are pretty one dimensional. They pretty much, you know, live uh, for that, you know, killing me. What does he do on his off time? We've left with two many questions. So, what's that? Started with, ooh, anything can happen. It's like, well, give me something. You know, take any slasher character. You have a general modus operandi of how they work. Like Ghostface from the Scream series, you know, the killer winds up being different people, but they all want to kill Sidney Prescott because of something that had to do with Sidney Prescott's mother, and they use the uh, tropes from horror movies to do their killing. Uh, you know, Jason Voorhees, he, he attacks anyone that uh, enters Camp Crystal Lake because they, he and his mother went to Camp Crystal Lake so they closed because of his uh, tragic death. You know, or like the Jigsaw Killer, you know, he uh, targets people that he feels have wasted their lives or gotten away with some incredible social injustice or some incredible crime, so he wants to punish them for it. And even as like complicated as uh, the Halloween franchise has become, we know that Michael Myers wants to kill whatever character Jamie Lee Curtis is playing, and that he does the majority of his killings on Halloween or like the day before and on the day of Halloween, but it's known at all Halloween time. So it's like, you know, we do know some basic things about just about any slasher or killer or, you know, demon or whatever we have. But with the other, we know nothing, nothing at all. What we know in the beginning of the movie is the same, that we, practically the same what we know in the movie. And at the very end, you're left with a lot more questions and are just really, really frustrated. So as I said at the beginning, I gave Hellfest a B plus and I gave Blufffest a C plus. And that's mainly because of the execution of their premises. You know, the main premise of Hellfest is that it's a uh, psychopath that we don't know what his true motivations are and he just randomly targets people and these folks, these protagonists were just wrong people at the wrong time. Uh, so it really executes that premise excellently. Whereas with Bloodfest, it is a good movie, uh, you know, the C plus South Atlantic movie. No, it's a very well done movie. It's made by this company called Rooster Teeth, but apparently it was their third uh, feature league film. Uh, it is very well done, but because you're telling me we got this vast array of kills and 100 people dying, but we don't see them, you're not executing your premise properly. And that's why it loses so many points. It also loses a little bit of point because even though it's a horror comedy, 
I didn't really laugh that much. I had one good laugh. Several people in the audience were laughing, uh, you know, but I was like, <laughs> I only have one good <laughs> laugh. And also, something that loses points with Hellfest is that it was difficult for me to suspend my disbelief because in the Hellfest, there are several areas where the guests just walk into the haunted houses and attractions and just wander about, and all the attractions are automated. And it's like, no, there will be attendants inside the attraction or monitoring the attraction from some base. There will be attendants on the entrances as well as the exits. There will be uh, much more security. You know, I I've worked at the Magic at Walt Disney World and I've worked at Universal Studios, so I know <laughs> how these things uh, work. And even if I didn't, I, I would be suspect that, that guests are just allowed to randomly wander around these giant facilities, especially since the guests have to sign a waiver because there's a certain area of Hellfest where the uh, scare actors are allowed to touch uh, and grab and shake and everything like the, uh, the guests. So the guests sign a waiver. So if this theme park is that big and that vast and that popular that they know they need waivers and they uh, have all these actors and things like that, then they're going to have all types of things, all types of monitoring, all types of, you know, security to make sure that the guests are not misbehaving and that the uh, scare actors are not misbehaving. So the idea that the guests are just wandering about and the other is just wandering about <laughs> doing all these uh, homicides and, and death, it, it, it doesn't uh, ruin my submission of disbelief. But when it comes to which movie I overall enjoyed, I definitely enjoyed Bloodfest more than Hellfest. And that's because I was just a lot more I can rewatch Bluffest over and over again and just enjoy the uh, uh, antagonist a lot. It's just interesting. It's fascinating. It's wonderful. It's something that's really, really rewatchable. Whereas with Hellfest, it's intense and it's bloody and it's scary, but once was enough. You know, I mean, if someone were to rent it for me and play the DVD commentary or someone that worked on the film were to sit with me and say, okay, here's all the interesting that happened uh, with, you know, this shot and that shot and this little item and that little thing, you know, maybe I'll learn something. But just watching the film itself, there's nothing more to learn, there's nothing more to see. And like I said, that first act is completely pointless. I can take the first kill in the uh, introduction section insert it into the second act and you wouldn't notice. That's how pointless the first act is. And so what am I to learn if I rewatch Hellfest over and over again? I, I probably wouldn't learn anything. Whereas Bloodfest, I would definitely enjoy seeing this again and again and again and again. Maybe I'll learn more, maybe I won't, but it was a lot more interesting and fascinating and fun to watch over again than Rewatching a random guy showing up and killing some random people on a random night. <laughs> so once again, uh, the Graves uh, Hellfest gets a B plus and Bloodfest gets a C plus. But you know, which did I enjoy more? Which would I rather see over and over again from years to come? Definitely Bloodfest over Hellfest. Okay, those are my thoughts on Bloodfest and Hellfest. If these kind of movies sound great to you, then I also recommend checking out The Fun House Massacre. That is also a movie about a group of young people that go to a horror festival and find out that the terror is real. Uh, what makes The Fun House Massacre different from Bloodfest and Hellfest is that it's about a group of homicidal maniacs, about six or seven escaping from a missile institution, infiltrating the uh, festival, taking over certain areas, and terrorizing uh, groups at random until, of course, we run into our main protagonist. So, if you're interested in theme park terror, check out The Fun House Massacre, along with Bloodfest and Hellfest. And with that in mind, I thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe, or dislike, share, and subscribe. Once again, I'm High Heel Knight, and remember, find inspiration everywhere.